As we all know, there was a new patch released earlier today. So for this one, we're going to be going over all of the new changes. I'm going to show you how you can find and use the impulse grenade, as well as the new missions, voting for difficulty increases. And towards the end of the video, I'm going to be doing a walkthrough of the new Brave Beginnings quest line. But first, I want to explain how you can find impulse grenades and how you can use them. Now, I haven't tried every type of map yet, but I have been able to find them in all of the maps that I did play on. And basically, I'm just going to show you some of the items you want to look out for if you're trying to get some impulse grenades. As you can see in this first example, you can get impulse grenades from these cardboard boxes. In this next example, you can see that we get some impulse grenades from this trash can. You can also get them from this wooden box that you see right here. You can also get them from this rubber bin that you see me get one out of. I also get some impulse grenades from these graves. You can also get them from these yellow barrels. And you can also get them from these smaller cardboard boxes as well. And I believe every time I pick them up, I either get like three or six impulse grenades. And I'm pretty sure there's some other items you could get them from as well. I tried to go through as many containers as I could to see which ones give impulse grenades. If there's any other items or containers that can give you impulse grenades, let us know in the comments below. But yeah, these were some of the items that I was able to get impulse grenades from. Now, if you want to equip the impulse grenades, you're going to have to go to your inventory and then go to where your ranged weapons are located. And from there, you should see the new impulse grenade icon. And just like with other weapons, all you have to do is equip it. And once it's equipped, you can throw it by pressing down the trigger button. And I'll go ahead and show just a little bit of gameplay just to show you what that impulse grenade looks like. I feel like it could be really useful when it comes to rescue the survivors or if you're trying to get a bunch of husk away from an objective. And not only can you use these against husk, but you can also use them against yourself as well as your teammates. And as you can see here, it launches you away and it can also launch you upwards as well. So if you want to try to quickly get to a second level, you can use your impulse grenades and they're going to disappear from your inventory after the mission is over. And the last thing I wanted to point out is that you can also knock back smashers. In this example, it took a total of three impulse grenades to knock the smasher back. What the f But yeah, like I said, I haven't really used them that much. If y'all would like me to do a tips and tricks when it comes to impulse grenades, let us know in the comments below. But yeah, for now, I just wanted to show you all how you can get them as well as how you can use them. There were also two new heroes, which I've already explained how to get. So I'm not going to waste a whole lot of time on those. If you want to know how to get them, check out the link that's in the description. But yeah, there's also two new heroes that came out with today's patch. There's also new group missions. The current mission is called Fight the Storm, and it's designed for four players. And you can tell this is the new one because it has the regular Atlas symbol, but it also has four Defender or Survivor symbols behind it. So that'll let you know that it's one of the new missions. And it's very similar to the previous Fight the Storm mission. The only difference is, is that the husk are going to have a higher power level. When I was in a 64 zone, the husk had a 74 power level. When I was in a 70 zone, they had an 80 power level. And I believe if you do a level 88 mission, the husk will have a 100 power level. And if you do a level 100 mission, the husk will have a power level of 118, I believe. So the higher the difficulty of the mission, the more the power level of the husk increases. And the last thing I wanted to point out with these new missions is that you can use a total of four defenders, even if you're playing in a full lobby with four people. And like I said, these missions will be harder because the husk power level increases. So you're probably going to want to use those defenders. Now in the patch notes, they said the rewards for these group missions should be roughly double, except for the Spring It On Gold. But when I tried it earlier, it didn't seem as though it was actually double. I'm not sure if it was a bug or something we did during the mission, but as of right now, it seems like it's not really worth it when it comes to the rewards. They also added some new items to the weekly section of the event store. I've already gone over those in a previous video. If you want to see some gameplay of the new Dragon Fire, be sure to check out the link that's in the description. They also increased the damage of the dragon's roar, so that should be a little bit more useful. And voting has also been added to the blue glow difficulty pylon. So after you insert enough blue glow for a difficulty bump, there's going to be a new voting window. Uh, if you have a team of two or three players, all you'll need is two yes votes to increase the difficulty. If you have a team of four players, then you're going to need at least three yes votes. 
If the vote passes, the team can vote to increase the difficulty again immediately. And if the vote fails, you're going to have to wait 45 seconds before you can do another vote. And when you recycle or retire items, you're now going to be given training manuals, trap designs, and weapon designs used to evolve those schematics or people. So not only will you get evolution materials, you'll also get your trap and weapon designs as well as training manuals. They also fixed some bugs as well as tweaked some of the heroes, but I'm not going to go into detail over those, but I will leave a link to the patch notes in the description if you want to go check that out for yourself. And the last thing I wanted to go over was the new Brave Beginnings quest line. So yeah, there's a total of seven new quests. There's four new quests on the fifth page and there's three new quests on the sixth page. The first new quest is called the Blue Badge of Courage and the reward for this one is 500 firecracker tickets. And all you have to do for this one is find and defend Val. And for those who are wondering, I completed this quest on a rescue the survivors mission in an industrial park. And basically what I did was I pulled up my map and I noticed that there were three white circles located on the map. And you're going to want to go to each of those locations until you find Val. Once you get close to her, you'll see a little blue survivor symbol pop up on your mini map, as well as a blue exclamation mark directly next to it. And you'll also hear some voice acting as well. And that'll let you know that you found Val. And all you have to do is kill the husks that are trying to attack her. And there is only like six husks you have to kill. So that one's a really easy one to complete. The next quest is called Band on the Run, and for this one you're going to have to search 5 tents for Val's team. And the reward for this one is 500 firecracker tickets. And I completed this one on a Rescue the Survivors mission that was located in the forest. And I was able to complete this within just one mission. And all you have to do for this one is explore the map. And you're going to want to check out the yellow exclamation marks that appear on your map, because some of those will be tents. And all you have to do is walk up to the tent and search it. Now the third quest is called Dress to Kill, and for this one you're going to have to gather 8 tactical clothing, and the reward you get is 100 V-Bucks. Now the mission I did when I completed this was a Destroy the Encampments mission in the suburbs. I believe you can also find plenty of clothing in the city as well. And all I did for this one was go from house to house, and I destroyed any dressers or cabinets that I saw that were highlighted. And these will also be marked with a yellow exclamation mark on your map as well. And again, you'll only need to find a total of eight pieces of clothing. But yeah, just go to the suburbs or the city and search through every house until you found all of the clothing. Now the fourth quest is called Two More. And for this one, you're going to have to gather five pieces of training equipment. And I completed this quest in a Deliver the Bomb mission that was located in the suburbs. But I believe you can also find this training equipment in other zones as well. But I was able to complete this within just one mission by going to the suburbs. And the reward for this one is 500 firecracker tickets. And just like with the other ones, you just want to explore the map till you see the yellow exclamation marks appear. And it seemed like most of the time they would be located inside of houses and buildings. So just go to the suburbs or the city and search throughout the different buildings. Now the fifth quest is called Inspirational Films. And for this one, you're going to have to gather eight VHS tapes. And once you gather all eight, you're going to get 500 firecracker tickets. And this is the only quest that took me two missions to complete it. In both missions, I was only able to find four VHS tapes. And the mission that I used to complete this quest was a Rescue the Survivors mission in the Industrial Park. Now the sixth quest is called Stab and Slash 101. And for this one, all you have to do is kill 50 husks with a melee weapon in successful missions. And the reward for this one is 500 firecracker tickets. And you can complete this quest in any mission but I completed it in a Destroy the Encampments mission. And again, all you have to do is get 50 kills using a melee weapon. And that one was probably the easiest quest out of all of the seven new quests, but they're all pretty easy to be honest with you. And as for the seventh and final quest, this one's called Let's Commence. And all you have to do for this one is search five book stacks. And once you've searched all five, you're gonna get the Bruiser Val Defender as a reward. And I completed this quest during a Rescue the Survivors mission in an industrial park and I was also able to complete it within just one mission and just like with the other quests you just want to explore the map till you see these yellow exclamation marks pop up and then you want to go to those exclamation marks because some of them will be these books that you need to find and you can see what the books look like right here and once you've searched all five books and successfully completed the mission as soon as you complete the mission and go back to the home screen you'll be given the new Val Defender as a reward now as of right now, I'm not sure if she has static perks, meaning that everybody's going to have the same perks on their Val Defender. 
but the perks that came with mine were an increase in melee weapon damage, increase in movement speed, increase in melee weapon crit chance, as well as an increase in melee weapon crit damage, and an increase in maximum health, which in my opinion is a really good role for a melee defender. If you've already completed the Brave Beginnings quest, let me know what perks came with your new Bruiser Defender in the comments below. But yeah, that sums up all of the new stuff that came out with today's patch. Let me know what you think about the new impulse grenades, the new hero skins, as well as the new defender in the comments below. I hope y'all found the video useful and thanks for watching.